This is Vogel Timeline with your host, Joe Washington. With a project of this magnitude, almost every day reveals a major milestone and historic achievement. As we witness America's rebirth of nuclear energy here at Georgia Power's Plant Vogel. Some big things are happening here, really big. This is the 900 ton containment vessel bottom head for Unit 3. It was lifted and placed onto its cradle in Unit 3's nuclear island recently, making this the heaviest lift to date. The bottom head is the first of several components that will make up the thick steel structure known as the containment vessel. This is where the reactor and associated steam generators and components will be housed. The bottom head was assembled on site in the containment vessel assembly area where we can see that work on the Unit 4 bottom head is well underway. Each bottom head is comprised of 58 plates that are welded together. And next to it, we can see the progress on the middle and lower rings for Unit 3. Once all the components for the containment vessel are in place, it will be surrounded by heavily reinforced concrete to create the shield building. Right now, the CA-20 module for Unit 3, which will be placed adjacent to the containment building, is being welded in the module assembly building. The CA-20 module houses equipment for used fuel storage and handling, and various other reactor operation support systems. When complete, it will be the equivalent in height to a five-story building and will be the single largest component used in the construction of the AP-1000 units. The containment buildings for Units 3 and 4 will each be connected to their respective turbine buildings. And in the past couple of days, we've seen the Unit 3 turbine building rise from the Georgia clay and begin to take shape. It's exciting when structures here go vertical. It also makes heads turn when mammoth components like this de-aerator for Unit 4 arrive on site. Everyone looks forward to milestones like these as we're living a little piece of history here every day at Vogel 3 and 4. Today, there are 2,650 workers on site, and that number is expected to grow with the project. There are many different kinds of jobs and specialties here, and Quincy Robinson can tell us more about that. There are a lot of other opportunities here as far as different crafts, we have um, electrical craft, carpenters, concrete finishers, iron workers, pipe fitters, and all these crafts offers an apprenticeship program which consists of three to five years of training, on-job training, you get paid at the same time, and it's, it's a great opportunity for the future. This is the Turbine 3 building, the plant Vogel here. This is the actual area I work in, along with the rod busters, the carpenters, the laborers, the surveyors. The rod busters are the guys that's doing all the ties. It is a very important role as far as getting this steel in. It has to be done. And then it's poured with concrete so we can further the progress of the project. Thanks, Quincy. Every single person who works at this construction site is focused on safety. CBNDI's project director for Vogel 3 and 4, John Simmons, has more than 35 years of design, construction, and project management experience and he's responsible for ensuring the project is completed safely while meeting the objectives for quality, schedule, and cost. We have been in a ramp up phase for about the last four or five months on the project. Uh, we've added 250 workers over the last three months. Most of those workers are supporting our concrete work and our module installation work. A lot of welders are being added to the project and it's great to see the mix of the workers that are coming on uh, to the site from Georgia. Uh, a lot of younger workers are, are coming in uh, and uh, that's just great. It's great for the local economy and, and we like to get that mix in here also. We're going to be continuing the work in the OX building and the containment. We just placed the first uh, nuclear walls. That work's going to be continuing. We just placed the first mechanical equipment. That work will be continuing. We're going to be placing consolidated concrete. That's coming up. Now the other thing that's going to be happening that's significant is we're going to be setting the condensers in Unit 3, and that's going to be a very large pick. Thanks, John. Together with consortium partner CB&I, Westinghouse, the designer of the AP-1000, is responsible for the successful execution of the engineering, procurement, and construction contract for the project, which is more than 50% complete based on contractual milestones. Scott Gray, Vice President for the Vogel 3 and 4 AP-1000 project for Westinghouse, has more. We're targeting two major activities, at least. 
One being uh, the setting of the CA-20 structural module in the Unit 3 auxiliary building. The other significant milestone will be the concrete placement, or the first nuclear concrete, for the Unit 4 base mat. Over the next six months, our goal is to achieve elevation 100, which is the surface level surrounding the nuclear island, which allows us to start the construction of, for example, the annex building, which will be used later on for us to install equipment which supports the initial energization uh, startup activities. We have a very collaborative working environment within the consortium. We work very closely together. We make decisions together in the best interest of the project. We work very closely with our customer, Southern Nuclear, to try to make sure that we address all the critical issues that everybody is interested in and is important to the construction of the project. The key to our success, whether it be on an individual activity basis or for the project as a whole, is the commitment that we've made as a team and as a project to a strong nuclear safety culture, to the safety of our personnel, the quality of the work that we do, doing it right the first time, and continuous improvement. Thanks, Scott. Every activity here is performed with Georgia Power's uncompromising commitment to safety, as well as the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's oversight to ensure all safety goals are met. NRC inspectors are on site here full time at the Vogel 1 and 2 operating facility, as well as at the construction site for Units 3 and 4. And recently, Nuclear Regulatory Commission Chairman Allison McFarland toured Plant Vogel and expressed confidence that safety objectives are being met here. In preparation for today's visit, I was able to spend time with uh, our resident inspectors. We have resident inspectors at the site, both at the operating facilities and at the construction site. And uh, both of these teams are, of course, focused on the main priority, which is the work and mission of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, which is ensuring public health and safety. Construction here continues to be well managed and is progressing toward Georgia Power's goal of providing a safe, reliable, clean, and cost effective source of electricity for today and for generations to come. That's all from here for now. Join us again for the next Vogel Timeline. Follow Georgia Power on Twitter at Georgia Power and Twitter at Southern Nuclear, and also at Georgia Power and Southern Nuclear on Facebook.
my eye. It happened. Hey, can we do it again? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All you gotta say is. Gaps in our house. Go on, baby. We're the new, city's new center for public safety. This is a 95,000 square foot facility that will house police, fire administration, and fire station one. We're actually at the front entrance of what will be the new building now. You can see the large circular area will be the lobby. And as you walk into the front doors, there will be a, a reception area. The first half of the building is the police department and the various divisions. Upstairs above us will also be police department. This area over to the right of the lobby is going to be a flex space to allow for future expansion. It will start out as either a flex space or possibly small retail space that can be leased out. And then as the police department grows and needs that space, we can actually move into that space. So it's an economical way to build in future expansion. The area that you see behind me is the apparatus phase for new fire station one. You can see there's actually four bays that will house the engines. And the area just short of that is the where the fire station dormitories will be. Firefighters will actually live in this area when they're on shift. And the area on the second floor is fire administration, which includes the fire chief and the inspectors. The stormwater on this site will be retained underground. We actually have seven large sand filters that will go in and they are under the parking lots for the building. So we didn't actually lose area on the site for um, a surface pond like you would see in other areas. We're in the second phase of construction. The first phase was demo of the existing buildings at the site. Um, this site consisted of about six or eight businesses, um, many that were vacant. The building that you see here is actually going up. Um, we're in steel framing and pouring roof decks and floor decks. It's about a 95,000 square foot facility and the project spans about three years. There's definitely a scale difference. When you're driving by at 45 miles an hour, the, the building does not look as large as it actually is. When you get up underneath of it, it's a, it's a very large facility. And just in comparison, City Hall is about 35,000 square feet. So 
this building being 95,000 square feet, just short of three times larger than City Hall. Oh. I'm very happy to see it finally coming out of the ground. Once the, the block and the brick go on, things will look like they're moving slower because most of the work will move in, inside the building, but we should be in the building around June of next year. After that, we will have to vacate and demo their old building and where their building sits, we will put in a parking lot.